Yes, we do. Sister Missy today was awarded a plaque for being, for being Service Personnel of the Year at Kenna Elementary. We have a celebrity in our midst. Amen. It's so good to see everybody tonight. And Bonnie, I just want to tell you how thrilled I am you're here. It thrills me that you are here. I thank God that you're here. Amen. It's been 33 years since I received the Holy Ghost. 33 years, February 5th, 1989, was the night that God stepped into my life, changed my destiny, my destiny, erased my past, delivered me from a life of sin, and it has been a walk of faith ever since. There have been some very difficult times, hard times. There have been some times of glorious blessing, opportunity. I've witnessed things that I would have, I've been places that had I not surrendered to God that night, I would have never been. I, I, I've been to Africa, I've been to Europe, all because I love Jesus. That's it. I've witnessed miracles that have taken place. Some of the moments in my walk with God have been, have been absolutely incredible. And then there have been times. There have been times that it's been hard to put one foot in front of the other. There have been times that, that I have struggled and I've had my share of questions of why such and such would happen or this or that. And that, just like you, just like you, I've went through those moments. But Romans chapter 10 and verse 17 says this. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. What has got me through the glorious times and the not so glorious times is that I have chosen to live by faith. That's it. There's no, there's no uh, calculus equation that you have to figure up. There's, there's, there's no deep philosophical thing you have to search out. It is simply living by faith. That's what I want to talk about tonight, living by faith. By faith. Let's pray. God, I thank you. What a blessing it is to serve you, God. Not a day goes by that I don't thank you for God allowing me to live for you. I pray tonight, God, as we come to this part of the service, that my mind be anointed in the Holy Ghost and that, God, you direct my words and my steps tonight that I may speak under the unction of the Holy Ghost and that, God, I may help somebody tonight that your word would be just what they came needing to the, in this service tonight. Because I know every service is important to somebody. So I pray tonight, God, help me to be a blessing to that somebody. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's praise the Lord one more time. God, I love you and I thank you, Lord, for the atmosphere I feel in this house. For the blessing of your presence to feel you, God, to sense your anointing among us. Oh, God, saturate this place with your glory and with your power. Jesus, how we love you. And we do need you, God. We need you. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hebrews 11, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. I believe that God is God and God is God all the time. I believe there is nothing too hard for God. I believe there is nothing that God cannot do. I believe that God is an answerer of prayer. I believe that God is a healer of the sick. I believe that God is a deliverer of the bound. I believe that God is a lifter to those that are downcast. I believe that God is the hope of this world. I believe. I believe. That's what my faith says. I believe. It's not true because I believe it. I believe it because it's true. That's what my faith says. See, faith is like a sense. It makes it makes us sure of unseen things. It makes us sure of future things, which we know about only through the Word of God. It makes us sure that there are things which we can see and touch, but there are also things we cannot see. There are things that we simply understand by faith, by faith. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. When we are aware of the reality of these things, we naturally take into account and it affects how we act. When you start believing these things, it affects how you respond. You responded in church tonight with your hands raised. You responded in church tonight speaking the name of Jesus. Why? Because of faith. It was faith that brought you here tonight. It was faith that brings us to God. It's faith that helps us seek after him and search after him. It is faith that we do these things. Rothschild, a very wealthy man in his day, laid a foundation of his fortune because he had the news that the Battle of Waterloo had been won. And because he knew the Battle of Waterloo had been won a day before anyone else in Britain knew, he knew ahead of everybody else. And that enabled him to buy up all the depressed money that was out and around. And I, I would I think we call that insider trading today, but that's what he did back then. And he bought up all the money shares, which rose as soon as the news was made public. What he brought, bought for pennies on the pound all of a sudden turned into an enormous fortune. He did that because he knew something. He did that because he had faith that something was going to happen that had not happened. When he found out or heard that Waterloo had been won, the battle of Waterloo had been won, he knew or believed that the, the money would all of a sudden regain its value. So if he bought it today for nothing, tomorrow it would be something. That was his faith. And it affected what he did. What he believed affected how he acts. That's what faith does to us. Faith affects how we act. Faith affects how we live. Faith affects how we walk. Faith affects what we do. Noah built an ark because he had faith. 
God had spoken to him that there would be a flood and he had faith in the voice of God that he had heard. And because of his faith in the voice of God, Noah built an ark. Abraham left his home, left everything he knew, walked away from everything that was easy for him, walked away from family and friends because God had spoken to him about a country. God had spoken to him about a land that he would give him. So Abraham packed up all of his donkeys and all of his belongings and all of his family, and he left the Ur of the Chaldees because of Faith, faith in what God had said. I find it interesting that Joseph, Joseph, who had come out of Israel not on his own accord or out of the, away from his family, not of his own accord, but was sold into slavery by his brothers after they had cast him into a pit in the ground. And he's taken into Egypt. He is sold into slavery in the house of Potiphar. And, and there he, he is uh, exalted and he's, he's uh, uh, promoted over and over until he becomes the head of Potiphar's house. And then he's falsely accused and he's thrown into prison. And then in prison he comes in contact with the baker and he comes in contact with the butler in prison. And there he interprets dreams until they re he's remembered. And then he's taken before Pharaoh and he interprets Pharaoh's dreams. And God uses Joseph to save a nation. And God uses him to feed his family in, that was uh, starving in Canaan land until the day that they all die. And the day that Joseph died, the day that he died, he looks around the room and those that were standing around his deathbed, his dying words were this, don't leave my bones in Egypt. Don't leave my bones in Egypt. Now, there was no Moses at that time. There had been no plagues. There, was, there had been nobody that had been appointed the deliverer of Israel. Nobody was trying to lead them out of Egypt. But yet he tells them, don't, don't leave my bones here. Every time they would walk past the grave of, of Joseph, they would remember, Joseph said, we're not always going to be here. Joseph said, we're coming out of here someday. It was his grave was a reminder of a promise that God had made to an Abraham that had been hundreds of years before and a promise that they would have a promised land until the day came that Moses did arise and Moses did lead the children of Israel out and guess what went out with them? They went out carrying the bones of Joseph because Joseph had spoken by faith. It determines the way you act when you live by faith. 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 Faith says, I know God's going to take me out. Faith. I got faith we're going to leave here someday. I got faith there's going to be a trumpet and there's going to be, uh, uh, we're going to see Jesus in the air. I got faith that one of these days uh, we're going to fly away. I got faith. I haven't seen it yet, but I got faith. You see, God never fails. And God's word never fails. You can't, you can't point to a place in the word of God where God has failed one single time time. But where there is faith, God is there. Where there's faith, where there's somebody reaching out by faith, there could be the darkest, the darkest, most wicked sinner in Jackson County. And that person, if they were down on their knees right now, reaching out to God in faith, guess what? God's going to reach back to them. God's going to reach down to them. Where the faith is, God is there. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11.1 1 isn't so much a de uh, definition of what faith is as much as it just helps us understand the reality of faith. 
the reality of what faith is. It is the substance of things hoped for. It makes things hoped for as real as if they were already here. I don't know what some of you are hoping for. I don't know what some of you are praying for. But your faith says it's sitting right beside me. Your faith says it's on the way. Your faith says there's a promise coming down my dusty road. Your faith says I can't see it in the physical, but I see it in the spiritual. Your faith is the substance of something that you can't even see yet, but it is a reality in your faith. Whatever you're praying for, whatever you're asking God for, faith says the giant's already dead. Faith says healing's going to come. Faith says the bill's going to get paid. Faith says, and faith is not only the substance, it is evidence. It is evidence. It is an unshakable evidence that the unseen, the unseen spiritual blessings of living for God are absolutely certain and absolutely real. I did not come into this service tonight wondering if God was going to be here. I did not come into this service tonight questioning if God was going to be here because evident, my evidence said he's met you there before, he'll meet you there again. My evidence said I haven't seen it, but I've got evidence in faith that it's going to be a reality. It's not a leap in the dark. Faith is not a leap in the dark. It's a foundation that's built on this book right here. It's a foundation in the Word of God. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Folks, if the Word of God says it, believe it. If the Word of God has declared it, believe it. If the Word of God has said it will happen, it will happen. I think it's interesting sometimes how people view churches and assess churches. Beautiful building. Boy, they got a beautiful building. Or some of them view churches and assess churches by their programs. What programs do they have? What do you got for young people? What have you got for this? What have you got for that? Some churches assess, assess churches by their pastor and, and so on. It goes on down the line. But you know how, how Paul evaluated churches? You look through every epistle. Every epistle that Paul wrote, he covered three topics. Now, there was a lot of others he covered, but there are three topics that are consistent in every epistle. The epistle to the Romans, the epistle to the Corinthians, first and second, the epistle to Galatians and Ephesians and Philippians and Colossians and Thessalonians. All of those epistles that Paul wrote to the churches, there are some consistent things that are in each one. And I kind of believe it's the criteria by how Paul kind of kind of judge the church or, or or evaluated the church is a better word how, how he how he looked at the maturity and how he looked at the spirituality of the church and those three things that that's covered in every epistle is faith hope and love covered in every epistle he talks about it in every single epistle now to the Corinthians he talked about the gifts of the spirit but only to the Corinthians but Faith, hope, and love, he talked in the Corinthians. To the Romans, the same. And he spent a lot, a lot of time on faith in, in the book of Romans. And John, Paul commended each church early in, the, in his letter, in the early verses of the letters, and he, have, he commended them on certain qualities. And if Paul thought one of them was lacking, he would talk about those qualities later on in, in the epistle. And when Paul began his letter to the church at Rome, he, he makes this statement in Romans chapter 1 and verse 8, he said, first, everybody say first, that kind of puts some emphasis on what he's getting ready to say, doesn't it? First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. Wow. Your faith, you can't keep your faith silent. Everybody's talking about your faith. 
Everybody's having a conversation about the faith at Rome. They, they come to general conference. Have you heard about the faith at Rome? They have a church rally. Have you heard about the faith at Rome? Through the whole world, everybody's talking about their faith. He said, I thank God for your faith. I thank God for your faith. He commended them on their faith. The faith that Rome was so well known. There must have been something powerful about their faith at the Roman church. But he didn't stop there. Verse 12 of chapter 1. He says this. That this, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Paul said, your faith strengthens me. And he said, the mutual faith of you and me. He said, my faith strengthens you. You know, sometimes I, I think we get the idea when we come to church, we're, we're, we don't realize really what's transpiring because there is a connection between us. There, there's a connection in the church, a spiritual connection that our faith, Faith strengthens somebody else. Our faith affects somebody else. You may not even realize it. You may not, you may not know what's going on across the aisle and a couple of pews back. And you may not realize what's your worship because faith demonstrates itself. Faith says I've got to praise the God I've got faith in. And you may not realize what your worship is doing back here. Or what your worship back here is doing to somebody up here because it is we are comforted by our mutual faith. You know where, nowhere does Paul commend the Roman church for their hope, and nowhere does he commend them for their love. Now, if you read later in the book, he did pray for the Roman church that they abound in hope. And he did encourage them in Romans 13 to love. So he didn't commend them for that. He commended them for their faith. Remember what we read at the beginning, Paul said, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the, by the word of God. In other words, I can't think myself into faith. You ever heard somebody tell you, you need to think more positive? Well, I mean, there's, that's not a bad thing. That's not a terrible thing. I don't preach against people thinking positive. Matter of fact, I like positive people. I like being around positive people because positive people make me positive. So I, I like that. But being positive isn't necessarily faith. It's not necessarily faith. Faith extends into the spiritual. Being positive is only about what is natural. But faith extends into the spiritual. I can't think myself into faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Have you ever noticed that as the word of God is preached, your faith meter starts to beep, 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 beep. It starts going up a little bit. You're, you're, you, you, you may not even notice it at first, but all of a sudden your, your, your faith meter starts to, to rise. You've been through a rough week and, and things haven't been going real great, but, and your faith meter is kind of... But then the preaching starts, and the Word of God starts to come forth. And all of a sudden, something stops happening, Sister Deem, to our faith, because our faith starts rising. We start hearing scriptures, like where Jesus told the man with the withered hand to stand forth. And the Bible says, when he looked round about them with anger, being grieved for the hardness of the hearts, he saith unto the man, stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it out, and his faith was restored whole as the other. And all of a sudden, you begin to realize, oh, Oh, yeah, God's a healer. I came in here sick. I came in here hurting. I came in here weak. But oh, God's a healer because our faith is starting to rise. Or scriptures like, He arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was calm. And all of a sudden, your faith. It's been a stormy week, Pastor. 
It's been a stormy week, but you just said peace. God can speak peace into my heart, and my faith is starting to believe I'm going to make it through this storm. I'm going to make it through this trouble. I'm going to make it through this point in my life. I'm going to make it through this. Or the preacher gets up and starts preaching, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance and all of a sudden your faith is going, whoa, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> suddenly, suddenly somebody believes God will fill him with the Holy Ghost. Suddenly somebody who needs a refreshing and a blessing in the Holy Ghost starts speaking in tongues. Suddenly somebody starts saying, oh God, I'm feeling you again. It's been a while, Jesus, but I'm feeling you again. And your faith meter, it starts to rise. Faith. Faith is not a one-time commodity. That's why the disciples said, Lord, increase our faith. Because faith is not just a one-time event in your life. See, I've got more faith today than I had 33 years ago. Because I've grown in grace and in knowledge. And I've grown in faith and we can understand this because faith cometh by hearing. It's not talking about a passive hearing. Not like just sitting there and listening to the radio and it's just noise and you don't even hear what's going on. You don't hear that. That's, faith cometh by hearing. But it has to be an active hearing. It has to be a hearing where you connect with the faith, and you participate, and you start stepping out in obedience. It comes with hearing that requires obedience to the Word of God. That's, when, that's why Jesus, when he looked at the man that had the withered hand, and that man was in there, and up until Jesus told him to stand out, that man had covered his hand. How do you know that? Because he would have never been in the temple. He would not have been allowed into the temple with a withered hand. He walked in with his withered hand covered. How many times do we walk into church with our withered hand covered? How many times do we come into the house of God hiding the very thing that's troubling us? And Jesus told this man, with a withered hand, he said, stand for. He called him out of the crowd. He called him. He, he said, if I'm going to do your miracle, brother, you're not going to hide it on the last row. You're, com you're, you're coming out, and you're going to stand forth. And he called him out. And that man with the withered hand, Jesus told him, stretch forth thine hand. And he pulls that hand out. And he, Jesus didn't take his hand and one digit at a time start pulling his fingers out. No, he told him because faith requires obedience. And he had to stretch forth that hand. And when he stretched forth the hand, all of a sudden, that hand that had been weak and withered, all of a sudden didn't just open up, but had strength. He was able to carry with that hand. He was able to reach with that hand. He was able to do whatever he needed to do. He could clap with that hand. He could worship with that hand. He didn't have to worry about coming into the temple anymore. He could come in of his own. The man obeyed. You see, faith requires obedience for it to be an active, living faith. It requires stepping out. See, faith, faith walks with God. That's how I'm here 33 years later, Elder Pettit, because I walked with God by faith. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. 
And I'm here 33 years later because I've walked with faith. But he, uh, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 5. Did I give you that one? Yeah, there it is. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, what does that mean translate? That means he just took him. It's like the rapture. He just took him. He was and then he wasn't. God just took him up. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. That he pleased God. Now let me ask you something. Are you Bible scholars? What great miracle did Enoch do in his life? Did he part any waters? Did, 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 Enoch, did Enoch call fire down from heaven at any point? Did, did, Enoch, did Enoch do any miracle? You know what the Bible says? Put Genesis 5 up. You know what the Bible says that Enoch did? Genesis chapter 5. Did I, know, I didn't give you the scripture. 22, go to verse 22. 522. Genesis 522. 522. There it is. This is what Enoch did. And Enoch, Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah, his son. 300 years he begat sons and daughters. 23. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Verse 24. And Enoch walked with God and he was not. For God took him. Enoch's testimony was not marching around a city to see the walls fall. It wasn't, it wasn't calling fire down from heaven. His testimony as he walked by faith. He walked with God. He had a walk of faith. Enoch's testimony, he lived by faith. Faith is not a Sunday thing, and it's not a Wednesday thing. It's a Monday and a Tuesday and a Wednesday and a Thursday and a Friday and a Saturday thing. It's an everyday thing. It's a thing when you get up in the morning, and it's a thing when you go to work, and it's a thing when you're with your family, and it's a thing when you go to bed at night. It's an everyday thing because faith is an active belief and trust that God, the steps of the righteous, are order to the Lord. And God, where I go, you've already made the path that God, you're going to take me where I go. And Lord, you're going to guide my steps and you're going to lead me and guide me. Faith is a daily walk with God, living by faith. It's, faith is not just what you need when you need a miracle. Faith is not just what you need when you're, when you're depressed or in fear. Faith is not just what you need when troubles surround you. Faith is something you need every single day. You've got to live and walk by faith. Let me tell you why this is so important. Put Luke chapter 22 up. Musicians come. Put Luke chapter 22 up. This is why it's so important. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. Do you think that's changed? I don't. I don't think it's changed one little bit. I think Satan's after every single one of us. Satan hath desired you, that he may sift you as wheat. Verse 32. But Simon, this is Jesus talking. I've prayed for you, Simon. I've prayed for you that thy faith fail not. That Simon, as you walk with God, as you just live for God, Simon, I prayed that your faith fail not. 
But Simon, I pray that your faith fell not because there will become times, Simon, when you're going to be standing and warming your hands by the fire. And someone's going to ask you, you're one of them, aren't you? You're one of them. You were, you were a follower of Jesus. You were, you were with Jesus. I can tell by your accent. You were, no. No, I wasn't. And then you hear the rooster crow. Somebody asks you another time, you're, I know you. I saw you with him. You were the day, here the day he healed my mother. No, you got me confused with somebody else. And the rooster crows. And then there's, I know, I know. You can't deny him. I know you were with, that's why you're here. You were with him. No, you, you're mistaken. I wasn't with him. Matter of fact, he got so angry, he said some few words he shouldn't have said. And the rooster crows. That thy faith fail not, Simon. Because there's going to come a time when you feel like you failed God. It's going to come a time when you feel like you failed God. And Simon, you're going to wonder, did you go too far? Did you get too far away from God? Did you do too much that God can't forgive? Simon, you're going to wonder if God will take you back. So I'm praying for you, Simon. This is why you got to live by faith. That when your faith fell, that your faith fell not. That when you are converted, when, when you get through that, that the very thing you came through, will strengthen somebody else, will strengthen your brethren, and you'll be a blessing to somebody else because of what you came through, because you kept the faith, and you lived by faith. Why is this so important? Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16. This is my last scripture. This is so important because when he goes through all of the armor, the helmet, the breastplate, the belt, the shoes with the three-inch spikes on the bottom. He gets to the shield and he says, above all, above all, take the shield of faith. Above all, you make sure You've got that shield, and you hold that shield up because when the enemy sends the fiery darts of the wicked, you know what fiery darts are? They're thoughts that the devil starts trying to put in your mind. You can't make it. You can't do this. Why are you even trying? All those thoughts that the devil tries, and, and that's, that's just a few. I mean, there's a, there's a plethora of things, but you've got the shield, and no matter where he comes from, that shield is mobile, and you can move that shield wherever it needs to go, whatever the situation, whatever the problem, you can guard. Above all, take the shield of faith. Above all, live by faith. Above all, walk by faith. Above all, keep the faith. Above all. Live by faith. Stand with me. Why is this so important? Because the enemy will come in like a flood. And the enemy's still trying to sift you as wheat. And the enemy's still after your soul. And the enemy is still fighting you. The fight's not over till you walk through those gates till we get the other side above all the shield of faith I gotta live by faith brother Justin I've made it 33 years not because of who I am not because I'm anything special or there's anything great about me I've made it 33 years because I've chose to walk by faith Oh, every day I trust you, Jesus. Every day I trust you, God. 
Every day, God, I trust you. Today's no different than yesterday. It may be cloudy and it may be raining and it may be storming in my life, but it's no different than yesterday because today I trust you and I'm walking by faith. I'm going to keep my faith. I'm going to take each step by faith. I don't know what tomorrow may bring, but I'm walking by faith because I trust you, God. I'm walking by faith. I'm living by faith. Why don't you step out as we come to the end of this service and let's walk up here by faith. Let this be your declaration of faith tonight. I'm going to live by faith, Pastor. I'm going to live by faith. I'm going to walk by faith. I'm going to make it by faith. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, in your name, Jesus. Go ahead, Sister Missy. Oh, let's just talk to the Lord for a while. 